Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is truly incredible. I am pretty pumped right now because I am about to show you a ball python that has been something I've been super, super excited about for over two and a half years. And the reason for that is, is I have no idea what this is. And look at, oh, she's got some eggs out of her thing. She finally laid eggs. Now let me just tell you what, this was actually a pinstripe female that was bred to a pastel lesser female. That is not what you should get. Okay, this is a ball python, I have no clue. And look at that beautiful clutch. She had two eggs out, but she also had five eggs in here. I'm gonna go ahead and candle this whole clutch, obviously, because it looks like she's rolled things around. But the point is, is that this is a mystery ball python. Two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, I produced this animal and I was like, what in the world is it? Again, it's certainly not a pastel lesser pinstripe, which would be a pastel kingpin. It's basically patternless. It's got a little striping on it. I have no idea what this snake is. It didn't genetically make any sense. Now getting this clutch of eggs basically gives me a little bit of a window into what potentially the genetics are, if it's something brand new or not. With two, four, six eggs, once these hatch out, I can start to unravel the mystery that's been on my mind now for almost three years. So this is awesome. When she got grab it, I was like, please lay good eggs. And we actually bred her to a pinstripe, red stripe, yellow belly, which is ridiculous. So I don't know what's gonna hatch, no clue, 57 days. This might be one of the most anticipated clutches that I cut this year, just because I have no idea what's in it. So uh, I am so stoked she laid good eggs. The only other clutch today was actually this ghost or hypo ball python. Oh, she's got a couple eggs out of her coils, which usually means there's a big clutch because she can't even wrap around them. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take these eggs that are out of the clutch, a little bit deflated, but they should actually pop back out within a day or so. If we have to increase the humidity a little bit, we can. And then we'll see what else she has going on. Who? come on girl. This is a beautiful girl, and she was bred to a champagne lorry het for ghosts, so we could get a bunch of really cool things. Looks like we got one little slugger in here, that's too bad, but the rest of the clutch looks amazing, and again, it was a nice big clutch. Again, she probably couldn't even wrap around them because she had so many eggs. So we'll get these eggs in here, and we'll give them a count up. We got two, four, six, eight, nine good eggs, one bad egg, that's a pretty good clutch. So every day, we're piling the eggs up, so uh, I tell you what, it's gonna be amazing here in the next little bit, hatching all these cute little monkeys. And the last clutch is actually this beautiful pin specter, which is basically a het for super stripe if you have a yellow belly, bred to a pin stripe, red stripe, yellow belly. So we have the chance of producing some pin super stripe red stripe stuff, which is really beautiful. And she's on a really nice clutch of eggs. Good job, mom, you did so good. Look at how good that is right there. Nice size eggs, not too big, not too small, so that there's plenty of them. Mom looks like she did really good, so she's not all that beat up and stuff like that. Just slowly get these eggs off the paper. And of course, we'll get mama cleaned up and ready to go and get her back onto food as quickly as we possibly can. So what do we have here? Two, four, six, eight beautiful eggs. So I tell you what, this was a great day. Three beautiful clutches and uh, some really good potential stuff. So again, 57 days from now, these clutches will get cut, but trust me, we're gonna take the egg cutting to the next level this year. And just like that, we have 50 ball python clutches in the incubator and uh, maybe 100, 120 to go. My daily checkup of Nolava and Lilith, she's actually down at the bottom here, right by the nest box. That tells me she is ready to lay. I mean, I keep saying any day, I seriously every day come in thinking that I'm gonna have eggs, but uh, you can still see she's got little marbles in her, so she's definitely got eggs. So I'm gonna just leave her alone and hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe tomorrow we'll have have some frilly dragon eggs. Now that the open is just coming up here in a handful of days, by the way, if you want to book a spot, thereptarium.com. Again, we're selling our slots. You can buy as many slots as you want, but they are booking up quick. So definitely go to thereptarium.com. Also, you can book private tours now. You can book birthday parties under 10 people, but we have to get back to finishing up things like, obviously this all needs to be seamed out. There's just a whole bunch of little things that we kind of haven't had to do for the last nine weeks, right? Because we've been closed. So now we have to get all this kind of finished up and looking good. So we got our work cut out for us this week, but it's amazing and I'm so excited that we're just a handful of days away from opening up again. Me and Brian have actually been uh, talking really, really heavily about what we could do, like next step type thing. Really, really cool stuff are being done with alligators, but not so much with monitors. Not so much with iguanas. Now, don't get me wrong, there are people out there doing incredible, incredible things, but we're just not, to me, doing enough. We could do so much more. These animals are more intelligent than I've ever, ever, ever in my lifetime ever given them credit for, and working here has certainly proved that to me. So how do we do that? Well. I have a couple ideas. It's something I've been seeing people do with dogs and even other animals, even alligators. And it's called stop and go. 
Basically, the, the idea of the, uh, of the technique, and I'll go into further one day when we actually show you how I plan on going about this. But basically the idea is I want to be able to teach our monitors to stop on command and come to me on command. So it doesn't really matter how far or how short that is, it's just a matter of like how do I get him to do exactly that. So it's a, that's the type of brainstorming I'm talking about. There are ways that, that, that I have ideas to do it, and there's like three or four different ways I can think of doing it, but I've gotta figure out one, and one's gotta work. Obviously our dietary needs are gonna change substantially. We're going to have every type of food we could possibly find, and even actually go out and do some cool videos of me showing you guys like different different little critters that, that we can even catch locally, and how we prepare them, and how, and how we can actually feed our animals stuff that you can go out there and catch yourself and actually feed to your animals. I'm so excited to take you guys on this journey. I am oh man, I couldn't be more and more happy to be a part of this, especially with Brian and everybody working here. It's gonna be a really great journey and I really hope you guys come along. Guess what time of the day it is, kids? It's Kaluber Egg time. Okay, that was just my way of doing a silly intro. It's Kaluber Egg time, guys. This is actually a hat creamsicle scale. It's bred to same. Now this girl last year actually laid slugs. You can see on June 17th, she slugged out. So let's see if she has good eggs this year and pretty good not too bad there are a couple infertiles in here but for the most part looks like a pretty good clutch but let's go ahead and get this female back in the cage and then we can take a closer look but I can tell you this much the fact that she a hundred percent slugged out last year she did better this year there's no doubt about that so let's jump in to see what we've got going on again we'll just peel off the good eggs here get them in and we'll give it a good count and see what's going on again not a great clutch by any stretch but I'll tell you what I was expecting maybe all slugs so hey I'm not gonna complain about it looks like we've got two four six seven good eggs and two four six bad eggs so more than 50 percent fertile that's at least an improvement that tells me that probably the male last year was the problem with the fertility and she might have a little bit of problems as well maybe one of her ovaries isn't working well or who knows what's going on nevertheless I'm happy with the clutch that we get but we have a few more clutches to pull and hopefully they'll all be perfect next up and let's hope that this one uh, gives us a good clutch of eggs this is just actually a het snow corn snake and it's bred to that super for pink coral snow male. So these guys could be really beautiful for sure. Let's see, looks like a beautiful clutch of eggs. Are you kidding me? They look great. Now that's more like it. That's what I wanna see. 100% fertility is always good. And again, this is just a normal classic corn snake right here that is actually had for both albino and aneurythristic, which is the black corn snake, making it a snow. And then again, it's bred to that pink polygenic snow corn male. So half these babies should come out beautiful pink coral snows. There's two Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve eggs. Definitely a better clutch than the first one. So I was checking for colubrid eggs, and I see this one here. This is a Baron Cal King and says, Hi, my name is Carol. I have no idea why her name is Carol. So let's find let's find Lori and find out. Lori! Hey, Lori. Why is that Cal King named Carol? <sighs> she deserves that name. Why? Because she's killed like three males this year. She's so Carol Baskin. Yes. You named her a Carol Baskin. <laughs> yes. Jessica and I were talking, and I mean, does it fit or does it fit? Oh my god. <laughs> and left no remains. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you guys go. Uh, we now have Carol Baskin, the California king snake. I know I tell you guys all the time that I miss you guys being here with the Reptarium open, but I've got to be honest with you, animals like Bella here, they miss it too. I mean, she is starving for attention all the time, and we try to give her as much attention as we possibly can, obviously. Myself, probably more than anyone, because she is my baby. I love her so much, and I love the fact that literally I come to the cage and she just comes rushing over, just like this, to say hi to me. She's such an amazing animal, but Again, it's different not having all the people coming through so and we can start to have uh, people back at the reptarium safely and these animals can start getting spoiled like they deserve it. My guy Tazzy, I haven't showed him off in a while. He is such a beautiful animal. Just shed out. It's got a little bit of shed still left on his tail, but looking absolutely adorable. Tazzy is such an amazing animal. And again, now that we're almost open, the fact that people can come out and play with Tazzy again is going to be incredible. I, I just, again, am so excited that these animals are are gonna start getting attention every single weekend. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. But I just have to show Tazzy off because he is amazing and he looks so beautiful now that he has that fresh shed of shed. Now that he has that fresh shed, oh my gosh, let's just see what he does and uh, I'm sure he'll go back home when he wants to. And there Tazzy goes. And there Tazzy goes. All right, bye bye. See you later, buddy. <laughs> I love that animal. Guys, 
got some gargoyle eggs. Who are this? Yeah, Who's this, this from? Doesn't have a name. Oh my gosh, yeah, she's pretty. She's, pretty, she's really kind of small. Is this her first clutch or she had others? Uh, she's had some other ones, oh, which okay. is the only reason she got paired this year. Okay, but, uh, she's I think they're good. She's had a couple good eggs so far. Okay, well, let's hope. Fingers crossed. Let's see what we got. There are they are. Yeah, they Do look they look good? good? Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah, pearly white. Yeah. Small eggs too. They're little ones, so yeah. that's so cute. That's awesome. Still have out though, just fine. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Good job. Next up is another corn snake that is actually a het strawberry sunkiss corn snake. So the sunkiss is actually a cool kind of interesting color pattern mutation that kind of really changes the actual head pattern more than anything. And then of course the strawberry is a recessive hypo that just kind of looks really strawberry looking, and it's just bred to the same thing. So they're both normal looking. Looking. We'll of course get the shed out of here, get some water in, get her all cleaned up, and take a look at this clutch. It looks really nice. Not a huge clutch, but a beautiful clutch for sure. We'll go ahead and plop these in here, count them up. Two, four, six, eight eggs. Not bad. And for those of you guys that know, all these eggs up here, of course, are colubrid eggs. The majority of them actually hatch in 60 days. Sometimes they'll go 65 days because we don't actually keep the temperature steady. You can vary it from like, say, 78 degrees to 84 degrees. So if it's cooler, it's going to take a little longer. If it's warmer, it's going to hatch a little bit quicker but there are a couple things like hognose and other snakes that'll go about 50 days and then of course mangroves go almost 100 days these ones hopefully in about two months will have little babies then the last clutch okatee het scaleless bred to that abbott's okatee scaleless that is just absolutely a ripper i'll show you him as always just take a look at that snake right there i mean it looks like a painting that is just absolutely ridiculous and he's been such a good male this year i think every single egg almost he's produced has been fertile and now i probably jinxed myself <laughs> Did. The last time I said that on this exact same mail, about there was a bunch of slugs. So this is a beautiful Abbott's Okatee, by the way. Really beautiful female. She's actually heifer scaleless. We'll get her set up. Good job, Mama. It's okay that you didn't have all four legs, but sure enough, uh, I tell you that is hilarious that I've done this now to myself twice, where I'm like, oh yeah, all the eggs are always fertile, and then there's a bunch of infertile ones. So we're just gonna pull all of the good eggs out, and we'll get to the bottom of the bad eggs in a second here. So. Just kind of pull this last egg out right here. Looks like these two are good. These two are good. That one's good. That one is good. This one's kind of a so-so one. I'm going to set it up because you can see a little blood dot in it. These are definitely all infertile. So we've got two, four, six, eight infertiles. Two, four, six, eight fertiles. So 50% on the nose. So I, you will not hear me the rest of the year say anything about the fertility of a clutch before I pull a clutch. But nevertheless, still an amazing day of eggs. And I will always be thankful for what I get. That mystery clutch is wild. I cannot wait for 57 days from now where we can start to unravel that mystery and figure out what that animal actually is. And again, I am excited to be over here at the Reptarian doing these kind of little things, trying to get the place ready to open. It's going to be absolutely amazing. If you guys like this video and you want to see more egg cutting, here's a playlist of egg cutting right here you can roll through. Could you please support my podcast channel right up on this side? It's called Checking In. Subscribe to this vlog channel over here. Turn the post notifications on if you don't mind. Have a wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.